folks. Jesus said, I am the erection. I, sorry. No. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Elizabeth Holden. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace, that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, in death, resurrection. Would you pray with me? Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially we praise you for Elizabeth, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them and help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There are hymnals in front of you. Page 314 is the hymnal for In the Garden. Jeff, Kristen, and Brian. Yeah. This is uh, an unusual place for me to be. 
<laughs> uh, so I'd like to share some of the moments that are most memorable to me with, uh, with Liz. I first met Elizabeth Holden on July 4th, 1966. I had just uh, graduated from college and came home to Pittsburgh to spend some time with my parents before going into the Air Force. <clears throat> Liz was our backdoor neighbor and she had invited my parents to a barbecue party and uh, I tagged along. Liz, uh, in talking with her, she told me about her love of golf and I suggested we go play together and we did several times and I thought, uh, hey, this lady's really cool. So maybe I ought to date one of her daughters. <laughs> and so I did. And uh, so in 1967, Liz became my mother-in-law. And I was fortunate enough to get her approval to marry Mary. And uh, she's my mother-in-law. Our relationship will last for the next 55 years. She will occasionally offer constructive advice and occasionally I will take it. In 1972, I'm out of the Air Force with no job. We moved to DC and uh, Liz invites us and our family to <clears throat> live with her until we can find a place of our own. She was a gracious hostess and a few months later, she was very relieved when we left. Uh, in 1985, Mary and I went vacationing with uh, Liz and Raj to Bermuda, and we played golf at uh, Castle Harbor. Liz won again, and uh, she offered me some advice, but uh, I, I, at that point I was giving up golf. 2001, Liz and Raj moved to Fort Walton Beach. They joined a local golf course and invite me to play, and I gracefully decline. Roger dies in 2005. Liz is left alone in her condo. Well, not totally alone. She has her, she has McDuff, her third West Highland Terrier. 2018, Liz's health has began to deteriorate, and her family wanted her to sell her condo and move into an assisted living facility. And Mary decides that Liz won't survive at Westwood. So Liz, my mother-in-law, moves in with us. Mary does an extraordinary job of, of nursing her back to health. And so now in our home, Liz drinks a vodka water cocktail every evening. She watches every match on the Golf Channel. And she loves to go to brunch with us at the Yacht Club. And I swear Liz is going to outlive me. But sadly, I am wrong. She passes away on July 21st, 2022, just a few days before her 99th birthday. Liz was a wonderful person. We loved her. I could not have asked for a better mother-in-law. She will be missed. Thank you. Happy day after Thanksgiving. I hope everyone had a wonderful day of fun and feasting with their family and loved ones. Elizabeth Holden was my grandmother and one of four grandparents that my brother and my sister and I were very blessed to have. She wasn't a great leader. She didn't have a monster career. She didn't change the world. What she was, was a wonderful mother, a giving grandmother, and a caring great-grandmother. 
She was one of the most thoughtful people I ever knew and will probably ever know. Every Christmas, each gift for every person in the family was personalized just for them. She never spared any expense. She always, she was modest, didn't overspend, but there was a little bit of thoughtfulness into every gift that we received, which was amazing because it was like 50, 60 every year. She always put love and thought into everything she did. My grandmother was very generous in every aspect of her life, not only with family, but with friends and her faith. She was a devout Christian, and even in her waning years, she attended church whenever possible. I have many fond memories of her. As I was walking the dogs this morning, I was trying to think of one particular moment that stood out. Yeah, I couldn't. I could think of dozens and dozens, and I thought of another dozen while I was driving here today. Two quick funny stories, which seem petty to most, involve food. When I was young, probably 11, 12, she made aspic. Yeah, that's the reaction that I didn't give. Uh, I took one sip of that. She's like, oh, it's great. You're going to love it. Oh gosh, I thought I was going to throw up right there. And we argued about that for about 20 minutes and I went hungry. Uh, the other is we probably argued a hundred times about onions. I don't like raw onions. And she just couldn't believe that I didn't like raw onions. How could you not like onions? They're so great. I don't like them. But the one moment stood out I was about 20 years old, and my grandparents had a boat, and we went out for an evening cruise, and we were fixing cocktails, and I started to make one, and I wasn't quite 21, and I wasn't grandfathered in, because the drinking age right before I turned 19 was 19. Uh, she pulled me aside and said, Jeffrey, come here. I thought I was in trouble, probably getting thrown off the boat. Nope. No. She said, what are you doing? Oh, I was just making a drink. She said, well, don't put Coke in your rum. Use juice or tonic. Just don't use cola. And we had a, we had a laugh about it, and we talked for about five minutes. And that, that memory, 35 years, 36 years ago, has always been ingrained in me because it was just that moment that we became... A little bit closer. My grandmother's legacy will live on for generations to come because of the fact that she did such a wonderful job raising all of us, teaching us to have good morals and good values and make good decisions. Yesterday was a perfect example as we gathered for a wonderful Thanksgiving uh, feast in Defuniac Springs at my cousin's house and her barn. I spent time with as many people as possible but mostly the kids and realize just how wonderful and special each and every one of them are. Grandma Liz was truly blessed with something most of us will never get to experience, and that is that she led a fruitful and wonderful life and then was able to go out and be with the Lord on her own terms. She will always have a place in my heart as well as all as well as all of those that she touched. God bless each and every one of us, and especially Elizabeth Holden. So I was unable to speak at my grandfather's passing, and I decided I would speak today. I'm going to keep it together somehow. I do have to interject that the aspic, the important part of it, it wasn't just jello. It was tomato jello. It was disgusting, jiggly-looking red stuff. <clears throat> so good afternoon. My name is Kristen Last. I'm the daughter of Grandma's eldest daughter, Kathy Last, here in the front row. 
I'm thankful for all the family and friends <clears throat> joining in today's celebration of Elizabeth Holden's life. She was a wonderful person, and her spirit carries on in all of our hearts. The other day, I was looking at a deck of ins inspirational cards. They look like this. <clears throat> I chose this card that says, I honor how I want to feel. My first thought was the instruction was <clears throat> to own how I'm feeling, to really feel what I'm feeling and feel it deeply. I studied it and went, wait a second, I honor how I want to feel says, hey, set an intention <clears throat> and feel what you desire to. Today, I wish to feel joy and happiness that grandma has passed on <clears throat> to be carefree and boundless. I hope we all find smiles and cheerful stories to share. Here are a few of mine. I've been knitting since 2009, many times when visiting grandma at Mary and Bob's house. I brought a shawl or a pair of socks that I was knitting on. She would be mesmerized watching me stitch and throw in my English knitting style. The other day, some cousins went to have manicures and pedicures. I chose red nails and thought, <clears throat> if grandma were here, she would be watching me knit my little stitches intently. <clears throat> At Mary and Bob's, <clears throat> on another time, Mary was sitting side by side with Grandma. Mary held her shoulder and rubbed her back. <clears throat> Mary had to step away, and I slid into her spot. I held Grandma for a long time, like till my arm was tired, <laughs> and I was rubbing her back and her shoulder and her neck. Being close to Grandma made my heart sing. She had become so little and soft, soft-hearted, soft-spoken, and kinder each passing day. Another tidbit about Grandma. Grandma and Grandpa had three Westies. I believe Bob enlightened us that they were West Highland Terriers and they were named McDuff. So Cousin Carrie, a few years ago, found a small stuffed Westie dog about this size. At night, <clears throat> he would sit nearby to watch over Grandma. Sometimes I heard family pass by her bedroom and say, <clears throat> they went by and she was talking to McDuff. Sometimes chastising him, him, chastising him, be a good boy, and other times petting him. About six months ago, Grandma was eating dinner with my mom. I came over to Mary and Bob's and I brought a microwave dinner of shrimp scampi. <clears throat> she peered at my food, commented it smelled good, <clears throat> looked at her dinner, and I could tell she was wanting mine. I offered and she declined. I said, really, Grandma, you can have it. I moved my tray in front of her and slid her food, food in front of me. She smiled her beautiful smile and ate heartily. <clears throat> You're invited to share your stories and memories in a book called A Life Remembered at the high top table in the dining room if you make it over to the Yacht Club for this continued reception. Thank you for taking time to be here today and join in Elizabeth's celebration of life. I didn't come prepared to speak about food, but I believe my food story involves some disgusting 
thing grandma tried to poison me with around, it was right after they moved to Sarasota. All I remember it was that meal standing between me and the mint chocolate chip ice cream. I did not get the mint chocolate chip ice cream that night. Um, instead, I chose two poems uh, that I had looked up recently that spoke to me and I thought might resonate with all of you as well. So the first one is called Reunited, and it's a thought that I had as Grandma was nearing her final days of the joy she would experience, which will make sense in a moment. She knew her life was through, but wasn't scared to die. She closed her pain-filled eyes, her final breath, a sigh. Her husband took her hand and whispered, Welcome, dear. It's been so very long, we won't be parted here. This is for the family and friends. It's called, To Those Whom I Love and Those Who Love Me. When I am gone, release me, let me go. I have so many things to see and do. You mustn't tie yourself to me with too many tears, but be thankful we had so many good years. I gave you my love, and you can only guess how much you've given me in happiness. I thank you for the love that you have shown, but now it is time I travel on alone. So grieve for me a while. If grieve you must, then let your grief be comforted by trust. It is only a while that we must part, so treasure the memories within your heart. I won't be far away, for life goes on, and if you need me, call and I will come. Though you can't see or touch me, I will be near, and if you listen with your heart, you will hear all my love around you soft and clear. And then, when you come this way alone, I will greet you with a smile and a welcome home. Thank you. Now we have a special treat for Ferris Lord Jesus. Jeannie, would you like to come up? This is so neat.
I got to meet with the family a couple of months ago and visit and talk about some of the, the awesome things that Elizabeth did. And I asked a series of 10 questions and got some really cool answers back. I asked, what one adjective would you use to describe her? The family said, spunky, kind, and caring. Did she have any particular loves or hobbies? They said golf. Playing bridge that was forced by her in-laws to learn how to play because she never knew. But she had to fit in, so she learned how to play bridge. She was a very accomplished seamstress. And one thing that I thought was interesting, she never learned how to swim. And I asked if she enjoyed any particular songs, poems, or scriptures. I mean, it's pretty evident with what we see and hear today. Those are some of her favorite songs. If you could name one value or lesson, lesson she most wanted to teach the next generation, what would that be? She said definitely honesty to the next generation and cleanliness. <laughs> what one achievement or accomplishment would make her eyes light up when you mentioned it? Four kids. That was number one. She was very proud of them. And she got a hole in one three different times. Can you imagine that? That's pretty cool. All the times I've played golf, I've gotten nowhere near that. And uh, some of her favorite phrases or sayings, Lordy me, and you betcha. And that some of her nicknames I liked was Liz, but it's got an E at the front of it. The E is silent. It's just Liz. And Cricket. Cricket was her other nickname. And a cause or a movement that she felt deeply about? The church. And I asked the family, if she could have me say one thing during the funeral, what do you think it would be? They said, keep the family together, keep the cousins together. And the final question, why do you think the world is a little different because of her? Her organization and cleanliness left a mark. The scripture for today is John 14, 1 through 12, and 25 through 27. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid forgot to mention gardening was important to Liz I heard of a story where she uh, rode back from Minnesota in a dark blue Ford Galaxy she brought back dirt from Minnesota because the soil was so plentiful and, and nice I thought that was cool when Christians gather, gather for the funeral of a fellow believer in the faith, a singular moment unlike any other takes place. 
For in such a moment is the coming together of heaven and earth. The physical remains of someone whom God has called home connect the saints here with the saints in heaven. For the saints of God stand on both sides of the river of death. From the Lord's house on this side of heaven, we confess and sing the faith because another person whom Jesus has redeemed has conquered the last foe, death. And our songs receive a resounding echo on the other side of death, where the saints in heaven have sung their songs to welcome another member into the Father's eternal house. As we think about Elizabeth, our sister, now in the church triumphant, and for our own comfort, I speak again to you these words from Jesus. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If that were not true, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that where I am, you may be also. You know where I am going, and you know the way. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If it's true that no one comes to the Father except through Jesus, and it is, then God had work to do, and he did. This work of God was a most serious task that
And I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, when songs give place to sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to Him. From care He sets me free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know He watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know He watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For His eye is on the sparrow. And I know He watches. As you're able, let's stand together and sing the old record cross, number 504 and the red United Methodist hymnal. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it from day for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to bear it to dark I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown In that old rugged cross Stained with the blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my true. At last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown To the old rugged cross I will ever be true Its shame and reproach gladly then he'll call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies 
as at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Receive this blessing. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways, we trust you. And to you, with your church on earth and in heaven, we offer honor and glory now and forever. Amen. God bless you all.